I'm not anti-supplements and they have their place, but people will say, why, do, why? I've got a cupboard full of supplements gathering dust or like, you know, why is seed cycling working so well? And it's like, because it's food as medicine and our bodies recognize the nutrients. On today's episode, we have Mel from The Seed Cycle. I've been using these products for the last month and I have been obsessed. My skin actually feels like it's glowing since using them and it's such a good way to add more nutrients to your breakfast or your salmon at night. I'm so excited to pick Mel's brain all about seed cycling and hormone health. I know you're gonna love this episode. Welcome back to another episode of Self Dom Beautiful Humans, a safe place to learn and get inspired to live your healthiest and most fulfilling life. I am Dom, your host, and I feel so grateful to be living my passion, getting to interview inspiring and knowledgeable guests. Today's episode is all about hormones and more specifically, the power of seed cycling. Seed cycling is definitely getting some air on social media right now. It's something I've incorporated and it's because of the beautiful Mel from the seed cycle that I have done this. So Mel will chat to us all about what seed cycling is. I did want to preface that I recently got my period back. So I am so absorbed in all things hormones and balancing your hormones. So I'm so excited to pick her brain. Mel is also a functional nutrition consultant and a certified clinical EFT practitioner. She is also a mother of two healthy babies and her own journey inspired her to create the seed cycle. So without further ado, Welcome, Mel. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to chat with you. Yeah, I'm so excited. She's driven all the way from Canberra to be here. Oh, I'm easy. so I'm like <laughs> so I'm so honored. It's so special. Um, so I thought we'd start off and learn a little bit about you, Mel. What is your story? How did you get into seed cycling? Oh my gosh. Well, I have to say that seed cycling and even just hormone health was not my passion <laughs> and it was really I, it, it was something that I did not find sexy I wasn't <laughs> interested in uh, but it really came to me out of necessity I was working with women to help them heal their relationship with food and their bodies and I was priding myself on this holistic approach and we were going into gut health and I was very into microbiome this was like seven eight years ago <laughs> nine years ago <laughs> Um, I was um, teaching intuitive eating, real foods, um, EFT, so really supporting their nervous system. But there was this commonality with the symptoms and it was things like PMS, hormonal acne. I had a client who was on the pill but didn't want to be but was so frightened to get off because she was like, my skin's going to break out, my period's going to be painful again. I had women struggling with perimenopause symptoms and so there was this commonality of hormone imbalance and I just knew like if I don't if we don't address the root cause of the hormone imbalance we're not going to get to the goal we're not going to get to the weight loss goal or the clearing skin or the performance goal the increased energy goal and so that's when I started researching and my thought process was there has to be some foods we can add in to support their hormones I'm such a believer in food as medicine and Functional nutrition has this beautiful philosophy of vitalism and that as our bodies have this innate intelligence and we just need the right tools, resources to heal, adapt and thrive. And so with that, I came across seed cycling and that's now (laughs) the obsession is there. (laughs) Well, we were literally just talking off mic and I said to her how, first of all, as a woman, I had no idea about our cycle. I just thought, oh my God, I hate the seven days I bleed. And now I'm obsessed with it. So I completely understand what you're saying. It wasn't your passion like so long ago and now you're absorbed in it because I really, really relate to that. I want you to define seed cycling for those who don't know. Okay, so we can say it's like biohacking your menstrual cycle. Uh, It's a functional food and I know it's trending right now, which is great, um, but it's actually an ancient practice with roots in Ayurvedic medicine, Chinese medicine, and it's basically using food as medicine. That's great. So what are the different types of seeds? For seed cycling, there's four key seeds and we break them into two phases and we can talk about the menstrual cycle as well. And this is where it's so clever because as 
women, we we operate on a 28-day in Freudian rhythm, which is very different to how men's hormones operate on a 24-hour rhythm. And seed cycling takes this into account. So we're having flaxseed and pumpkin seed in the first half of our cycle and sesame and sunflower in the second half of our cycle. And two really important things with seed cycling is the therapeutic dosage, which is a tablespoon of each, and we're grinding up the seeds. And that's because we want to access all the nutrients inside and you know especially like flaxseed and sesame seed if you have them whole they're just going to go straight through <laughs> oh my God. okay I need to say something a bit TMI here do I want to say it yes um, so basically I used to always get colonics yeah and you could see the seeds yeah like in full coming out of your bum hole <laughs> like Oh my God, it's so true. When you don't crush your seeds, they just go right through. Go Why? Right through. Yeah, Why? Because the body can't access and can't, uh, because the shell needs to be cracked. And yes, like the pumpkin seeds and some sunflower seeds, like if you chew them really well, then you, you're doing But they're so doing small. That. Yeah, you don't chew them. No. And when we're looking at the studies uh, and, you know, to the experts who are using seed cycling as a protocol, the doctors, they're talking about the seeds being ground. So... Yeah, okay. I always recommend that. Okay, so let's dive into the menstrual cycle. I feel like you're the best person to ask about it. What are the four phases for those who don't know? And um, then you can go back to ways we can incorporate the seeds. And also about the estrogen, I've got many questions. Sorry, I'm like bombarded. <laughs> let's start with the menstrual cycle. Hit us. Yeah, let's do it. So our menstrual cycle has four phases. Who would have thought? Like, Oh, my God. I we know. Honestly, four. like I didn't know until like January this year. I'm 29 years old. That's insane. Yeah. Well, I think about like even through my nutrition studies, like I was giving, you know, talking to women about their food based on just like have this every day and yes, diversity, but like we actually have different nutrient requirements in different phases of our cycle. It's <laughs> um, insane. Yeah. So, but then you said it's ancient knowledge, right? Like we've known about this, yeah. but why have we not been taught this? Yeah. Well, you know, I do, I spend a lot of time looking at throughout history and like menstrual cycle education and, you know, uh, we did have like the red tents where women, we used to menstruate together on a new moon and ovulate wow. together on a full moon. And then, you know, there was like secret women's business. So, you know, girls were taught by their mums, by their aunties, by their grandmothers. And then there was this time where it became taboo and we stopped talking about it. And our parents uh, or our, you know, the females in our lives stopped telling us about it. And so I just heard so many stories from women saying, I got my period when I was 12, 13 and I thought I was dying because I saw blood I had no idea you know and so um, I, I see a change now and you know f- with my daughter like it you know we talk about it like it's normal yeah. and it is and it's part of being a woman and it's exciting and it's your superpower and when you get your period you're gonna have a period party yay <laughs> I love that <laughs> yes so but you know when we think about or many of us when we think about our menstrual cycle we just think like when we're bleeding but there's and that is one of the phases. So our menstrual phase is when we're bleeding, when our uh, uterus is shedding its lining. But then there's three other phases, like I said. So there's the follicular phase. And this is usually uh, from anywhere from basically after you've bled. So from day three, seven, um, all the way to ovulation, um, which is when we're fertile. Uh, and so our follicular phase, this is like our awakened state. This is like, so if our menstrual phase is like our inner winter, our follicular phase is like our inner spring so we can feel like we have a lot of energy for me this is like my get shit done phase like I'm going through my to-do list I'm like I want to clean out my pantry yeah like, uh, I have a lot of energy in this phase. Uh, in terms of nutrition as well, like I'll find that I'm not as hungry. Um, I'm not super interested in food, um, but I do like to focus on um, protein and healthy fats during this phase. And then when we move into ovulation, and this is like our peak. So this is when we're fertile, like for me, I feel shiny. I feel I know confident. you were saying that to me. Like, so I was like, I'm ovulating. I'm feeling really good. And you're like, you feel shiny. I was like, yeah, I feel shiny. I love that. <laughs> oh, and like for me, ovulation, I just want to like be with my friends and my family. I'm like cuddling my kids. I, I feel very giving during that time. Oh my God. I literally, because Tom, my partner was away and he came home and I was looking at him and I was like, why do I love you so much right now? And I was like, oh, cause I'm ovulating. 
makes this sense. Is so cool. And my dog even. I'm like, I love you so much. Yeah. I'm ovulating. <laughs> I'm nicer when I'm ovulating. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, we, we are. And it's just, it's such a beautiful time to experience and I find even when I'm podcasting and doing like workshops it's just so easy for me to give and and show up when I'm ovulating so you know we can talk about like scheduling things in and um, work if you can around your cycle like why not use that to your advantage and then we have our premenstrual or our luteal phase and this is where our energy starts to dip Uh, this is where our hormones are dropping to um, then move into the next cycle and um, preparing for that um, period, that menstrual phase. Uh, And for many, it's a time of, I guess, like, um, I I feel a lot of self-criticism during this phase. It can be a really hard phase. Uh, I find I'm craving a lot of carbs. And this is because we actually have a higher energy requirement in this phase. And I just find I need to be out in nature more. I need to be a bit slower. If I have had a full day of meetings, I just need to schedule a little bit more time for myself during this phase. And, you know, our, I guess our modern world isn't set up for this. It's all very much go, go, go. Um, But when you can use this phase to release and, you know, because you are going to physically release when you move into your menstrual phase uh, and, um, and really take for yourself, like it just makes things so much smoother and then also really focusing on like nourishing yourself like having that sweet potato having that rice having that sourdough to help with that um, I guess dip in estrogen and progesterone and so we can talk about the hormones as well because they play a huge role in the as well as the nutrient requirements those mood changes and the energy changes yeah I definitely want to dive into the hormones because from what I understand with seed cycling, different seeds have different um, amounts of estrogen in them, which helps with – is this correct? Yeah. Which helps yeah. with your your body when it's dipping in the hormones. Yeah, it's just so clever. So these seeds carry – vitamins, minerals, essential fatty acids, and the seeds in the first half of the cycle, so the flax seed in particular and the pumpkin seeds, are helping the body with the production and elimination of estrogen. Yes, that's what I I was reading up about. I was like, I'm butchering this, (laughs) but it's something like that. (laughs) And this is because those seeds have lignans, which are a form of phytoestrogen. And we have estrogen receptor cells all over our body. And when we're having these lignans, it acts like a plug and plugs that receptor what to do. So, uh, and tells that receptor what to do. So we, it works really intelligently on a cellular level. Uh, and so, you know, for some, it might be block that production of estrogen. Um, your body is making too much. And for others, that message might be make more estrogen. You need more. Uh, the zinc as well in the pumpkin seeds, uh, the iron, the magnesium, the omega-3, um, it, particularly in that first half of the cycle, are really setting you up to produce healthy estrogen. In the second half, the nutrients in the seeds are supporting the production of progesterone. So progesterone is like our calming hormone. It's our sleep hormone. I like to say it's like um, the Michelle Obama of (laughs) hormones, like strong, (laughs) confident, uh, but also like really um, grounding or it's like a um, cozy fireplace. And when we don't have enough and we're not making enough progesterone, it can be really hard. It can, it affects our mood it affects our skin Uh, and so this is where when we're having enough when our body is producing the right amount of estrogen then that flows on and supports the body to produce enough progesterone particularly in the sunflower seeds uh, they're really high in vitamin e as well and this is why i think People say within the first month, oh, my gosh, my skin's glowing. This is why we see so much of that of hormonal acne clear up as well. And then like all the fibres as well in the seeds. So that's where like a lot of uh, women will say, I feel less bloated. I'm going to the bathroom more regularly. <laughs> oh, my God. That's the one thing I've noticed since I've started using your seeds. My yeah. digestion yeah. is working very well. I wanted to talk about the pill. As you, as you said, you've had – women in your clinic who were on the pill, they didn't want to be on it, but they were just so petrified of the side effects. Can seed cycling help with balancing your hormones post pill? Yeah. And even before that, like we talk a lot about preparing your body to get off the pill, which I didn't do very well. (gasps) I've been lucky. Actually, it's been okay for me, but 
I feel like I just went cold turkey. <laughs> yeah, and that can be really hard because, you know, you think about the pill shuts down the production of estrogen and progesterone in that cycle. Uh, it also depletes the nutrients. So to prepare your body for that change, the nutrients in the seed. So we always, the protocol is to start seed cycling at least three months before you're going to get off. But if you haven't, that's fine. Just start as soon as you can, because it's going to help build up those nutrients. It's going to help your body remember that cyclical rhythm. And so, yeah, we have um, people coming to us going, oh my gosh, I was so scared, but having something I guess tangible I could do to prepare my body, uh, starting to understand what life is going to look like with a cycle again because when you think about it like when you haven't been cycling through those phases you can feel pretty neutral Uh, and then when you get off the pill and you start cycling again you've got like menstruation which can just feel like um, you really want to turn inwards and then you go from that to like follicular where you've got all this energy and you just want to get shit done and then you go to like I just want to love everyone and then you go to like that dip of like oh my gosh I'm just I don't have as much energy like that can be overwhelming in the beginning so uh, um, educating yourself and understanding um, what life is going to look like and what your hormones are going to be doing post pill yeah I wanted to talk about fertility as well with the seed cycle have you had some beautiful messages from people or results from people who have used the seed cycle and their fertility yeah one of my first clients fell pregnant uh, that I was trialing seed cycling with right in the beginning fell pregnant uh, quite quickly after starting and she was like I think it was the seeds (laughs) wow do you know what I think as well just the whole time you've been speaking as well I'm such a big believer in ritual and routine and of course the seeds work because they scientifically you actually showing that they help with the progesterone and estrogen production in your body but it's also you using those seeds every day and like telling yourself that you're doing something good that you're aware of your cycle I feel like that has a really beautiful flow on effect to your fertility or getting your period back or whatever it is because you're dedicating time to you it's like an act of self-love by seed cycling yeah and connecting with nature you know this is where like I'm not anti-supplements and they have their place but people will say why, do, why I've got a cupboard full of supplements gathering dust or like you know why is seed cycling working so well and it's like because because it's food as medicine and our bodies recognize the nutrients and and it's all of that and a huge component of it is that we're adding something in that's going to help you know so often with nutrition it's like can't have dairy can't have gluten (laughs) can't have refined sugar now can't have you know eggs are bad apparently according to tiktok you know like (laughs) whereas when you you know that really puts you into scarcity when you focus on like what can i have nourishing my body using real foods and real nutrients Uh, I've got to tell you a story so we were uh, I was training a GP clinic uh, which is so exciting on seed cycling oh wow so they're gonna stock it yeah yeah not stock it uh so the GP clinics that we work with uh I guess offer like a not a prescription but like a suggestion and they they give um customer uh, they give their patients like a fact sheet on, on seed cycling right. which is amazing uh, and that's because the research is catching up particularly in seed cycling and PCOS but uh, one of the um, GP said to me oh so you fortify the seeds with those vitamins and minerals and I was like no <laughs> those have seeds it. already have them in there really <laughs> but I've also heard that conventional doctors haven't really studied any nutrition so I also don't blame them for not knowing that no and I was so we're so happy to be in that space and to be able to train but you know I think that there's this disconnection with like how incredible real food is and from nature and like going back to your points like you know um, that creating that ritual that body literacy of understanding where you're at in your cycle and how to support your yourself and then the nutrients supporting from the seeds supporting you in that cycle like there's just it's so many benefits that's why I love having people like you on because you know this stuff the ins and outs but you're explaining stuff in a way that anyone could understand I think it's so important to realize that knowledge is truly our power and the more you understand the nutrients in different foods and it's not about taking things away it's about adding just like you said like add your seed cycling add your more fruit and veggies, add your high quality protein. It has such a beautiful flow into your life. And I pray that it helps your someone's fertility if they've been struggling that, with that. And I pray it helps someone maybe get their period back. But it's just like knowing what it's actually doing for you creates this mind-body connection. Like I feel like when I pour my seeds on my granola bowl, I'm like, 
okay, I know I'm doing something really good. I know this is going to help my body. And as I said in the intro, I've recently got in my period back. So this is the first time in my basically in my whole life because I went on the pill 13 years ago where I'm actually doing things with my cycle. I feel so connected to my feminine energy. It's it's such a special – yeah, I just feel like being in my feminine is my most powerful thing. Mm, I love that you're sharing that as well because I do often hear women say like I hate having my period it's inconvenient oh my god I got my period for the first time at the airport um like two weeks ago I came out of the airport bathroom and I screamed I got my period (laughs) the whole wait desk near the check-in were like looking at me and I was like I was just so excited. I felt so in my feminine and I think the more people talk about it, the less people will feel ashamed of it. It's a really beautiful thing to be in your feminine. To bleed is powerful because it's like your fifth vital sign. It's showing your body is working. I was so proud of my body. Mm. Oh, I love that. I love that so much. And I'm sure you hear stories like that all the time and that's that's a testament to you and and your product. I had a woman say to me uh, when she got off the pill, I feel like I can see in colour. Wow. And I was like, oh. That's insane. I feel like a lot of people can relate to that. I want to talk about back into the seed cycling and ways we can incorporate seeds. So I've been loving it on granola bowls, but what are some other recipes we can do with the seeds? Yeah, oh, my gosh. That's like my one thing. Like on Instagram, I'm like, I'm going to show you so many ways you can seed cycle. You will never be bored of seed cycling. (laughs) That's great. (laughs) So, yeah, like granola bowls, like on top of yogurt, in salads, like even with like sourdough, avocado, eggs, Mm. and then you add your seeds on top. So you uh, you can make like bliss balls. We have biscuits and brownies that have the seeds in them. We have new protein mixes Yeah, so Mel came over and she gave me the – so I've been using the seed cycle, which is the seeds, but these are like a biscuit mix and a brownie mix with different parts of your your cycle. I'm so excited. It's so rainy in Sydney right now. I'm like – gonna make these like can I make both like why not um so I think it's incredible what you're doing is there my question is I feel like all the recipes I keep including them in are breakfast are there ways to incorporate them into your lunch or your dinner yeah so like sa- salads for lunch um I even make this like uh avocado bread with it oh you put it <laughs> yeah. in the bread yeah Yum. yeah um could and you cross salmon with it yes like could, I yeah. feel like whenever I'm like I want to do yes. a crusting with this yeah there's so many options and, and even, they can be sweet or savory dishes yes. they kind of work for both yeah. which is incredible yeah. even the other day we were having Mexican and I mixed it into sour cream and then had it on top of like our Mexican in sour cream it was so yummy yeah that's so yeah. smart yeah so your skin and hair are beautiful mm. how long have you been seed cycling for Oh my gosh. Well, we've Before had the business. Time. So we've had the business for three years. Uh, and then I was probably doing it a year before that as well. So yeah, I feel like that's years. a lot because only recently is it really being spoken about. And mm. now it's like you were kind of ahead of its time, which is great. <laughs> oh, I just, you know, I saw it work so well with my clients. It was like that missing puzzle piece. And there's no one solution or, you know, a quick fix. And seed cycling in particular, like, you've got to do it for at least three months. To and start every day? It. Every day, you know. What happens if you miss a day? Oh, I mean, it's a fi- it's fine. <laughs> just, to, you know, double up the next day. Oh, or, double up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or just, you know, get back on track. Okay. Um, but I found, so the clients who would go out, buy the seeds certified organic is really important especially when it comes to hormone modulation because pesticides um, have edc so endocrine disrupting chemicals in it which is going to kind of go against what we're trying to do yeah Uh, so certified organic grinding the seeds and i would have clients i would teach clients how to do it um therapeutic dose and the ones that would do it were just incredible like missing puzzle piece their skin would clear out their periods would return they'd be like oh my gosh for the first time like I hadn't had that painful period like my mood didn't dip so much like just perimenopause symptoms like the fertility that we were talking about before like I get messages like all the time of like positive pregnancy tests, wow. like ultrasound. I had someone email saying, um, only you and my husband know, so please don't say anything yet. I didn't even know this person. I was like, you told me. Wow. And it's just, it just makes sense when you're supporting a healthy menstrual cycle, healthy estrogen, progesterone, healthy ovulation, then that's going to obviously increase your chances of conceiving. With that, do you think that they should be selling seeds at different like doctors or skin boutiques because you're saying it's so good for your skin? Would you like to... Seed yeah. cycling to be 
prescribed for people who go in with acne or who go in with a gut problem? Yeah, the be- we went to the Beauty Expo last year in Sydney and we were welcomed with open arms. It was madness. Like so many clinic owners were coming to us saying, we are seeing so many women with hormone imbalances, the hormonal acne, uh, and, you know, telling us about like struggling with perimenopause um, symptoms and we want to offer a holistic approach and so um, we are cl- collaborating with skin clinics and That's I just great. love that so much that they really care for their clients and want to offer this this holistic approach. I just I just saw it like I just saw it work so well and I guess like this is I love to teach like this is how you can seed cycle yourself. You may already have the seeds in your pantry. All you have to do is grab them out and grind them up like we were talking about. Uh, and the business really only came about because I started packaging for some of my clients who were like, it's all too hard yeah. now. <laughs> but I, I completely understand where they're coming from because until I was using your product, you literally have the scoop with the size. It's, there's, there's no excuse really. But before I'd seen seed cycling from – you know, at the beginning of the year, I never once thought to do it just because it felt too difficult. Yeah. So you've definitely made it easier. I want to talk, apart from seed cycling, you know so much about hormone health. What other things can women do to balance their hormones? Oh, I think the first one that always comes to mind is nervous system. You know, like when cortisol goes high, um, progesterone goes low. Uh, and then we can start to see those imbalance symptoms. So, for you know, it's different for everyone. For me, I find um, EFT, so emotional freedom techniques, really helps me when I am feeling stressed and anxious, upset about something, I can use that. Being out in nature uh, is a huge one for me, particularly in that lateal phase. Um, I know that for me understanding my cycle has had this huge flow on effect on supporting my nervous system. Uh, the other one is endocrine disrupting chemicals. You this know. is the hardest one because I see that we kind of have no way to escape it. <laughs> like it's everywhere. Yeah. Everything comes in plastic, all the products like, yeah, you can control it in your own home, but you know, you go to a cafe, they clean the table with Windex, you, whatever it is, and you're like, I'm just consuming all these endocrine disruptors and there's not, not much you can do. So yeah. how does it come about detoxifying that out? Yeah, and this is where the seeds can really help. Those fibres can help detox excess estrogen, particularly like those xenoestrogens, which you're talking about, like the environmental estrogens. But it's just about supporting... Uh, I guess your liver and that toxic load. So I know it can be really overwhelming, especially when you first go down the rabbit hole and you realize, yes, um, there are endocrine disrupting chemicals in our um, plastics, in our water, unfortunately, on a lot of our fruit and veg because of the herbicides in our makeup, in our skincare, in our fragrance. I know, I know, I know. But, you know, you might just be making a few swaps uh, at home and then that goes a long way. So, you know, I'll teach people like if you're using a moisture that you've used it up it's not one that you really loved anyway then when you go to replace it replace it with a better quality product uh, a natural product um, the same with when it goes like grocery shopping like start looking at like the ingredients what is in the foods that you're buying and now there are so many options in terms of just uh, really good quality whole foods that when you start making those little decisions it adds up and it makes a huge difference mm-hmm. I really love that. I think as well, it's like, you know, you don't have to throw out everything you have because first of all, financially, like times are tough. You can't throw out all your skincare, all your house cleaning products and just replenish them all. But I think when you finish one, let's make a conscious decision. You can also make a lot of these products in the kitchen. Yeah. And like I just, so I went low tox probably 10 years ago. Wow. And What was your catalyst for going low tox? Oh my god, my skin was broken out. Your skin is oh, beautiful. It used to be. I was. I was uh, overweight. I had a really bad relationship with food in my body, and I just. I knew like I had to make changes, and I started researching. I came across functional nutrition, and that just opened up my eyes. And I did it slowly, 
but the best thing and and you know like I spend a lot less now <laughs> there on skincare and makeup and I think about like the even just like when I switched deodorants back then it was so hard to find one that was like okay yeah but definitely. now there's so many good options <laughs> like well, it's I mean, like we're spoiled I mean it's so funny because I know that deodorants are really bad like a really bad one but I'm just so nervous to get smelly and I think like so many people are nervous of that too um I've been using one that I've, I'm really liking. It's like the gem, you know, that yes. gem brand because you can spray it. I found the roll-ons don't work for me, but I also do, I'm exposing myself, but I also feel like there's a lot of, um, like I train quite hard and yeah. maybe those times I'm a bit more cautious, but then on a day to, like today where it's cold, I can use my roll on natural and not stress too much. Totally. So when it came to your weight loss journey, I never knew about this, um, You took away the endocrine disruptors. What else do you think really helped? I got to the root cause of why I was always fad dieting and that was because I had this underlying core belief that I need to be skinny to be loved. So no wonder I'm spending all my teens and my 20s and all the thought the, the, the thoughts that were constantly through my going through my head was I need to be skinny I need to be skinny and then you go to one diet and it's really restrictive and then the next one and then I after each one I would put on more weight and then that really really disrupted my relationship with food uh, and led down like some disordered eating and then the reason I started studying nutrition was the only reason was and my only motive was if I learn about nutrition, then I'll learn how to lose weight. Wow. <laughs> and so then, it was very consuming for you. Very yeah. consuming. And when I started studying nutrition, it, I just learned so much more and my perspective, perspective started to shift and I started to understand food as medicine uh, and that's where EFT came into it as well because that really helped me understand those core beliefs and, and to clear them because now I think, oh, my gosh, I can't believe that does, that doesn't feel – that f- felt like a fact before whereas now it doesn't feel true at all. Uh, and intuitive eating as well, like I remember having this moment where I was like, oh, so I have – the answers. I don't have to do that lemon detox diet or listen to that, you know, that cabbage soup diet. Like my, I have these hunger fullness cues. And if I listen to them, you know, that's going to help me manage my weight. Like, and it did hugely. I think we all have a narrative that we tell ourselves as well. So you would have put a narrative to the person that you are, that you were. And then the next day it's like, you need to choose a new narrative and that's why I'm so big on the words that we speak to ourselves become our life. And it's like you need to rewire that. And even though you studied nutrition, maybe not for the right reasons, that knowledge, again, is power and it allowed you to see food in a different way. Like see it as our fuel, see it as our nutrition. And I'm sure 10 years ago you would have never thought you were going to create a wellness brand when you were the one doing the lemon detox diet. And that's super inspiring for myself and my audience because you can choose the person you want to be. There's no box on the person you have to be. So many people message me, how do I become, get in the wellness industry? How do I do this? Am I too old to do this? No, you're putting a narrative on yourself. So I find that story really inspiring. Mm -hmm. I also had a huge fear of public speaking. Wow. I I was looking at you like, wow, she speaks (laughs) super well. I couldn't even introduce myself without having a huge panic attack, like, wouldn't be able to breathe so that was a huge block for me ever doing anything where I was putting myself out there and you know I was able to work through that as well with EFT now now I love to chat like (laughs) yeah well how did you find that confidence when it came to speaking because I think that's something we all struggle with people used to tell me like just keep practicing and it will get better and it didn't it was really (laughs) it didn't it was really getting again to that core root cause of like why my body felt like I was going to (laughs) die every time I had to speak Uh, and that went to childhood memories and like like a a core memory of having to speak in front of the class when I was in year one Uh, and so my unconscious associated with that with like danger And so no wonder, like, again, like my body was having that fight or flight reaction. So, yeah, I think like particularly like in business, it's like it really forces you to do your own work. Yeah. (laughs) Constantly. Yeah. Yeah. One thing I always love to ask my guests is it's a little bit selfish of me, but I always want to know your tips in business. I think me, of course, I'm starting business, but a lot of the community, like what would be your three tips for people starting business? (sighs) Do your own work. 
you know, because it's like I see the seed cycle. Um, sometimes like the universe has the seed cycles back and sometimes I get in the way. <laughs> I'm the block. Wow. So I'm, I'm, I'm always aware of like the stories I'm telling people and, you know, if I am complaining about something or if I've got this story, uh, then I'm like, where's that coming from? Why am I you know, really, you know, stressed about money and then doing that piece on on money and finding that abundance. So for me, my business always does better when I'm doing the things that I need to for myself. And that is like the personal work, whether that is working with a counsellor or whether it is hypnosis or EFT or psychologist or whatever works for you, journaling, um, and and then taking care of myself um, and Yes, seed cycle is always on my mind, but I try to be really present. So if I'm with my kids, I'm with my kids. If I'm working, I'm working um, and just spending that time in nature as well. Yeah. So making sure I have boundaries, Mm. boundaries and keep to them. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I'm sure that baby Mel would be looking at you and being so proud, but I always end the podcast with the same question, which is what advice would you give to your younger self? Get out in nature. <laughs> really? What yeah. were you like as a kid? Um, I guess I was, but I didn't feel that connection. Yeah. And not no and not as much as I needed to be. And particularly through my teen years when things got really hard. I think if I was went out and did some slow walks in nature every day, like I think I would have been able to heal a lot quicker and work through and find what I, that that the peace that I have now. Yeah. Well, you have such a beautiful, calming, grounding energy, Mel. Like such a pleasure to have you on the mic today. If you haven't tried seed cycling, the seed cycle is a great way to do it because it's already packaged ready for you with the measurement and they're grounded. I have really been loving it and I'm so excited to try these brownies and cookies that you've given me. So thank you so much. So if you want to try the seed cycle, I have been given a special code. Use self-dom at checkout and you'll get 15% off. And if you make any recipes with the seed cycle, make sure to tag us so we can see it because we love seeing all the yummy recipes. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed the episode and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.